I think I just scored the coolest campsite. One of the benefits of being a tent is I'm at this really cool spot. So the ground is just like granite, but look at this. Is this not like the coolest campsite? Oh my gosh. Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to The Casual Puzzler. Today we are doing another installment of my puzzle story time. The first one I did, I'll link it down below, where it was all about my cats. And if you're new to this series, this is the second one in the series, it is when I will show you an overhead footage of me doing a time lapse of a couple puzzles. And then I talk about stuff that are totally not puzzle related. So if you really don't care about the story part, you can just put me on mute, put on your own music and you have a time lapse video. However, these two stories are ones that I omitted in my travel vlog from a year ago. So it was almost exactly a year ago that I went on my solo camping trip in Utah, in Nevada. And I think I spent one night in Colorado. It was super fun and it was was not the first time of me going camping solo or doing a road trip solo but this time around there were two different instances that I did not put in the video. The morning after the first incident I had actually told it in I had filmed it. I don't have that footage anymore because it was like 45 minutes of me talking about this this situation that happened the night before. I did kind of mention it in the vlog where I or maybe I put like a screenshot of like, hey, last night the story was crazy long, so I'll set it in a different video. So that's what this is. Um, so if you want to get caught up, I'll leave that vlog down below because it kind of will just show you the whole trip. But I did not tell you two stories that happened from them. And I will say it, they were kind of nerve wracking when it happened. And even today, I'm just like, that was nuts. Um, and I know like you could have probably give me advice and be like, well, you should have done this, or you could have done this, or this is something you should have done anyways, but it's already happened and I can't really change what I did or how it happened, but luckily I did come out safe on both occasions. It was even to the point, like, I didn't even tell my mom until like a month ago, um, because I, I'm sure she would have been too nervous for me to go anywhere by myself if she knew the stories. So here we are with the two stories. The puzzles that I will be doing are from Green Box. So let's see, we have Desert Dunes Habitat and then we have Wild Woods Habitat. Um, the brand is called Green Box and they do have other puzzles available on their website. They're really cute images. They're kind of pricey for the quality in my opinion. Um, and I feel like the overall end of result is beautiful, like it's a beautiful image. Um, but for one, somewhat glossy, two really thin pieces, and it does have a paper backing. That didn't hinder the experience, but I feel like they're very much, they kind of remind me of my blockbuster puzzles, and those ones are a third of the price as these guys. So I did enjoy it, but I don't think I would pay the full price for them if I got them on their website. You may want to have a beverage or something. I have some wine here in a little stemless class that we got at the Balloon Festival, and we're just going to get into this. So story number one. We start off in Nevada day one. So my goal was to get to Nevada um, from my house. So it was a very long day of driving. I wanted to get through Las Vegas and then on the other side of Las Vegas is the Valley of Fire, um, which it sounds exactly what it is. Um, it, it was extremely hot. I remember getting there at like 7 p.m. I was really hoping like gates weren't closed, which I, I learned later they're 24 hours, but um, I was really nervous that I'd get there and the, the gates would be closed and I wouldn't know where to go um, because it was a very spur of the moment trip. If you saw the beginning of that vlog, I pretty much like woke up and just left for the like four or five days. And so I ended up going to the Valley of Fire at 7 p.m. is when I arrived and it was so hot. It was about 110 degrees when I got there and my goal that evening was just to like set up tent, maybe have dinner, 
take a shower and go to sleep like that's all I wanted and luckily this place did have like a little bathroom area um, and then I had these tent sites so this place is really off the beaten path there's no cell signal no GPS like it's pretty secluded really hot in the desert and when I got there I was the only tent person um, there's two separate sections of the campground there's the tent sites and then there is the RV sites and it really isn't a big place they pay, they pretty much only together with both sections is around 20 campers um, and there's only like maybe four or five of the RVs and I was the only tent person on my own on the other side of the park. So I got there, you do like a self check-in thing and I just found my site which I was so excited about, it was so cool looking, there's like a big giant boulder, had like a hillside on one side um, which probably made things worse as I look back um, but it was just a very, it was a beautiful place to camp. Um, it was super hot, so when I got there, I just went to the restroom because I had driven all day. And when I came back, uh, the game warden stopped by, and she was like, Hey, I noticed that you're traveling alone. You're the only one person in a tent tonight. I just want to make sure you're okay and safe because we are expecting a huge thunderstorm and lightning storm within about an hour. It's red alerts everywhere, but of course, you don't have service, so I just wanted to make sure you're okay and that you're safe tonight. Um, so I just wanted to give some caution. I said, okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I will say I'm someone who's camped quite a bit on my own, um, but I also, also camped with Dave and we've camped in all different types of weather, lots of rain and, and thunderstorms. So I didn't really think anything of it. I just thought like, okay, perfect. I'll just set up and go to bed. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting to do any cooking or anything. I wasn't setting up like that. I was just like, you know, I'll just have like the MRE that I packed and I'll just, you know, I'll just kind of be inside the tent in the rain. I'm totally okay with that. Um, so it does only take me like usually, I'll say usually, about six minutes to set up my tent. I wasn't thinking I'd have any issues, right? So I get my gear out. I have my tent, which is just like a small little pop-up just for my, for me. Um, I had a little, I used these, I used a pretty thick yoga mat as my padding. And then I had my sleeping bag. So that's pretty much all I was bringing into the tent with me along with a backpack that has like a few essentials. So I had got all my stuff out of the car and I started putting up my tent. And it's so windy. You can hear the wind. Maybe I can put a clip in here, but you can hear the wind when I was doing that vlog where it's just like crazy windy. You can even hear what I was saying like with this far away. So it was incredibly windy. And I start unpacking my tent and it just starts flying. Not, but I'm holding onto it. So it's kind of like it was a kite and it was just like filled up with air and it's like float. Like I, it seemed like I was in a cartoon because it was just like full of air and I'm like trying to get it down to the ground or like stake it down. I'm trying to stake it down, but every time I stake it down, it, more air comes through it. It just lift off. And I couldn't, I didn't have enough strength to keep it down to pin it into the ground. Normally, I don't even use the stakes because I'm lazy. But I was like, well, I, I'll be safe tonight. But I couldn't even like do it because I'd like put one in. By the time I get to the next one, more air had come and it was like lifting it off the ground. So I was like, well, it needs weight in it so I can at least put in the stakes. So I ended up putting these, there's a bunch of boulders like probably like the size rocks that I was like grabbing and putting into the tent on the corner so that way I could have it stay down enough to put in the stakes. Well, I was putting these rocks in, but the wind is so strong. I wish I knew the like miles per hour of those winds because they were so strong. It was moving the tent with the rocks inside. And I was just like, I don't know where I got the strength to like keep it down and I was trying to pin it down, um, pin the stakes down and eventually I just gave up on the stakes because the reason I was so flustered is that off in the distance all I could see was lightning strikes. Um, probably, I don't, I'm not good with mileage or distance but just like a few miles away you could see lightning strikes all over. Like I've never seen lightning like that in my life and I was just like oh my gosh I just need to get this tent up and go inside and looking back I probably just should have like scrapped it a lot earlier than I did um but my goal is just like get inside go to sleep just deal with the wind and rain I just want to get inside the tent I finally get the tent up I go inside this took me probably about a half hour of me trying to get my tent together enough so I could be inside with my stuff so I put my stuff inside I sit inside 
zipper it up and I'm just like, oh my gosh, because all I can see is like lightning through the tent off in the distance and it's just like so crazy windy. So my lovely tent site now that I look back was probably just like a giant wind tunnel. Um, so that probably made things worse, but in general, even when I got there, it was super windy. So I don't know how much of a difference it really made, but it was so windy when I was sitting inside that tent, I was never so scared in my life at that point. <laughs> Story number two, why well, it's probably the, the scariest moment of my life. But this time I was just like, it was so windy, like the whole tent is like moving around me and like, it was nuts. Like I wish I, I wish I had filmed some of it just so you could see how crazy windy it was and how much lightning there was because it was just so nerve wracking. Um, and then I just had this moment where I was just like, I'm not safe. I should not be in this tent. I'm in like the middle of nowhere. I just want to get in my car. Because at least then if I got a lightning strike near me or something, then I'd have my tires, you know, I'd, I'd be okay in my car. Um, so then my thing was is that I couldn't just leave the tent there because the stakes had come up and it was just moving on its own. So I was like, well, I need this tent for the rest of the trip. So I just, I don't know, it must have just been adrenaline because lightning was very close at this point And I was just like, I just need to do this in like two seconds. So I just grabbed my whole entire tent with the boulders, with all my stuff inside, and I just shove it into the trunk of my car. Um, I didn't care if I broke stakes, I was just like, I just need to get this into my car, get in my car, and just, and just go through this thunderstorm. So I shove it all into my car with the rocks inside, which later that night, I don't know how I did that, it was just like, had this adrenaline to just like have this super strength. Um, so I get in my car, probably like in the nick of time because probably like probably like 10 minutes later it just starts thundering and pouring and lightning like it was like a crazy desert thunderstorm um and I it was so humid and hot oh my gosh I just remember how hot it was and I had this little neck fan that I use in my tent to like prop up and you can have like fit air in your tent which is lovely and I'm so glad I had that because I had that going in my car because I didn't want to run it because I didn't know where the next gas station was. Um, I had no service, but I did try to reach out to Dave. Maybe I can find those texts because that would be interesting to pop up here, but there was no service. Um, but occasionally one would go through and I think the texts were go going to him in the wrong order. Um, so he was getting like these crazy texts for me that was just like, oh my gosh. I remember put, like sending him like a pin of where my location was, which is what I do most nights when I'm on my own. I always just send him a pin. So I sent him a pin so he at least knew where I was. Uh, and I just rode up the storm inside my car. I ended up falling asleep and I probably woke up probably two hours later and the storm had passed. And I was just like, okay, I'm good. Uh, I ended up needing to go to the restroom. I needed to shower because I was covered head to toe in red dirt. Um, Cause I was like super sweaty when I was trying to get the tent situation up that I was just like covered head to toe with red dirt. And I was just like, I just need to go to the restroom, take a quick rinse off shower and try to get some sleep. Walking back from taking my shower, and it's pitch black. I don't have a flashlight. Um, I grew up in the woods, so I have pretty good night vision. Um, so I didn't have a flashlight. I was just walking back to my car. And so I was like, oh, you know what? It's beautiful out. There were stars everywhere. Like you couldn't even tell me that there was a thunderstorm two hours ago. Um, there was like the most magical stars. And I was just like, oh, I think I would much rather sleep outside because it was so much cooler. And my car was so hot. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take my tent out an attempt to set it up and sleep outside. I don't even care if it's like half up, I just would like to sleep outside. So it's now like 1.30 in the morning. I'm the only tent site, so everyone else is off in the other side of the park. So I'm still like I'm waking anybody up. So I remember trying to get my tent back out of my trunk and I was like, why does this weigh so much? Oh my gosh, it was so heavy. And so I ended up like dragging it back to the spot and like taking the boulders out of the tent because it, there was probably like four or five boulders plus my stuff inside the tent um, that I had stuffed in the car. So then I was like trying to take out the stuff that I put in there um, and I ended up setting up my tent 
in the pitch black. I didn't even have a flashlight on um, because my flashlight I was using, I think, was my phone and my phone was dying. So I was just like, I'm just going to save my battery on my phone and I'm going to just <laughs> set it up in the dark. So I just set up the, my tent in the dark, finally got some sleep, woke up the next morning, and that's where the vlog catches up on. So that was story number one. Let's get through story number two, which for me, it's hard to explain. And I hope I do okay and not get super flustered um, because this is probably the most nerve-wracking, probably life-threatening event that I've ever experienced. And it may seem extreme and I, I feel like looking back, I don't know what I could have changed. So just bear with me as I get through this story. Um, but I feel like for context purposes, it's good for you to understand the type of road that I was driving on. Um, so I was driving on the other side of Zion National Park. Um, and it's the same road concept. So when you're in Zion, the way you get up the huge mountain is you'll go up these like slow, these smaller inclines and you'll be like, be like driving and on your right side, you'll have a cliff. And then on, you'll do like a U-turn and continue upwards and then you'll have the side of the mountain and then you do another U-turn the other side of the cliff. So that's how it is when you're driving up these mountains in Zion or other now. The thing that I, that was different this time though, is that in Zion you have these nice guardrails that protect you from the cliff and that protect you from the side of the mountain. Uh, when I was driving on the other side, those things weren't there. There wasn't any type of guardrail it was just a cliff and there wasn't any type of protection of the side of the mountain. Um, so I did not know the direction that the GPS was taking me because it was horrible service. <laughs> that whole trip, I pretty much had zero cell signal. So I had just put in the directions and I was going a different route. So I didn't know that I was going outside of the national park. So I started driving on this beautiful road. It was super woodsy and foresty and I'm going up this mountain. And then I realized that I was going up another way, like through the U-turn and I was just like, oh, okay, um, I must be on the other side of Zion. It seems very similar and I know that's the direction I'm going. Like I had a relatively good idea of where I was. Um, so I was just like, okay, totally fine. Um, and so then it started thundering and all of a sudden, torrential downpours. Like I've never seen rain like this in my life. It was just like big, chunky, thick, tons of raindrops. Like it was like the windshield wipers did nothing. Um, I feel like it almost made it worse because it would just like make me blink and it was so rainy and so much of it and so intense that it was just, you couldn't see anything that was coming out of my windshield. My issue was, I could not stop because I had my older car and it did not have the best brake system, but it also didn't have the best, I don't know if it would be the transmission, but pretty much if you stopped on a hill, you would roll backwards. Um, and it'd be hard for me to get the momentum to go forward again. So I couldn't stop to go later um, because I would, I would go backwards instead. So it was, the, I needed to continue going forward and I remember following the line on the road so I could see the direction I needed to go. Um, and I was okay with the cliff side, even though there was no guardrails, driving up the mountain with no visibility, um, looking at the line in the road. And I saw other cars pulling off, um, off the side and on to the edge, but I couldn't because I was going up and they were going down. So they were pulling over going downwards, but I couldn't pull over going upwards because I hit the cliff and there was no place for me to go. So I was going up and there's cliff on one side, right? And so then I would do the U-turn and go up the other side. And I'm like, phew, finally, like I'm not on the cliff side. But the issue I had was that boulders were falling from the side of the mountain. Um, and so like, not like giant boulders, but boulders like this that would be very critical in a in, in an accident. So I was just like, shit, now I need to get through this side really quickly because these boulders are, and these rocks are falling from the cliff. So then I would do a, the U-turn and it'd be the cliff side. And I was just like following the line in the road. And I was just like, just, just keep driving, just keep driving. Like you'll get to the end of it. 
And then I do the U-turn and then I feel like the boulder side was actually the more nerve wracking of the two because I could see the cliff, I could see where it was and I could drive straight, but I couldn't tell when a rock was gonna fall onto my car. So I just continued straight and would just keep going and then I'd do the U-turn and there'd be cliff and then there'd be U-turn and there'd be falling rocks and it was the worst 15, 20 minutes of my life. Um, I don't even know if this story is giving it justice because it was just so nerve wracking and I remember just like gripping the steering wheel and being so distraught and I was just like just keep going, just keep doing, just keep going, just don't stop, just be safe, just drive straight, look at the line like and it was so rainy that, and it was so loud, the rain was so loud that it was just like also intensified the situation. And so I just kept going and it was annoying because the people going down could stop and then you could see the people even behind me were continuing to go upwards because we just can't stop. So I was just trying to get through this, this thunderstorm or at least to a place where I could pull off. Um, and so I remember finally the rain letting up a little bit that I could see. And I had finally gotten up to the, the top of the mountain to start the descent to go back down. And there was a pull off spot and I just like got there and I pulled off and I was like, oh, I was like shaking, like head to toe shaking. Um, like my hands were shaking, my heart was just like thuttering. And it was so scary. And so I remember finally getting through that section out of the forest and that's when I got the notification, red alert, flash flood warning. <laughs> I remember getting that like probably seconds after I got out of that woodsy area and it was like, like craziness. And then I even remember seeing that night that there was like a bunch of accidents and such on that mountain. Um, and I just, I ended up spending the night at a hotel that night. Cause I was just like, I'm so done with this trip. <laughs> um, and it wasn't scary enough that I wouldn't go back. Like, I would still continue traveling alone. But it was just one of those moments where I was just like, I can't believe I lived through that. And so I just wanted to share those stories with you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel like it was very rambly on my part. I both were super scary, but I lived to tell the tale. Now you guys know what happened during that trip that I did not mention in my vlog. Um, I hope you liked watching me do this puzzle. And I really like the image at the end. It's funny because this one actually looks very similar to the deserts that I was traveling in. So I just hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for sticking around with this one. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.